Scripture that I want us to dig into tonight starts with chapter 15 of John, verse 26. Chap goes to chapter 16, verse 15. As I dig into the Scripture this evening, listen to the Word. Listen to John. As he writes this, listen to the Word, please. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, He will testify of me, and you will also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogue. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God's service. And these things that will do to you because they have known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment, of sin, because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you'll see me no more. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but cannot bear them now. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He bear, hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. He will glorify Me, for He will take of, me, of, take of what is Mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I say that he will take a mine and declare it to you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you and praise you for your word. We just praise you for the awesome God that you are. Lord, just for a short time, let us be kind of figure, kind of picture, picture the coming of the Holy Spirit. Kind of picture what, what Jesus is saying to John to write down in the book of John. Open our eyes to see me, Lord, and we're going to give you the praise. You're awesome. And Lord, we love you. In Christ's name, amen. Now Jesus tells us in the Word that He's going to send the Helper and He's going to send the Spirit of Truth. Now the Holy Spirit is very valuable to us. Because you see, Jesus was persecuted. The world hated Him. The world hates me and you because we love Jesus. But now think about this. One thing that, that kind of bothers me, and I hope it bothers you as well, the more that I fall in love with Jesus, the more that I try to, and try to accomplish what He wants me to, is when I hear someone, come on now, when I hear someone take the Lord's name in vain, it sets me on fire. It sets me on fire. Why? Because they do not realize who He is. They do not realize that God put His Spirit within each and every one of us. God put His breath in each and every one of us. And one day, when they take and curse Him, they bring him down to the, the world's level, if you will. They don't realize that he is the creator of creation. He loves each and every one of us, and we are all created in his image, my Bible tells me. Now the Bible tells us 
that yes, that the disciples was witnesses to him. They was with him. But think about all that they got to be a part of. All the many miracles that they got to see Jesus do. Turned water to wine. Spoke Lazarus' name and he walked out of the tomb. But he also told them that he was going to be crucified. He also told them he was going to hang on a cross. He also told them that he was going to, in three days, he was going to walk out of that tomb. And you see, when it happened, guess who was the first one that got to witness that? It's kind of neat in a way. It was Mary Magdalene. I mean, think about this. This lady was demon-possessed. She was also... Jesus took care of that. She also poured some very costly perfume over Jesus' head and anointed Him. And you know when the disciples and Jesus was invited to Lazarus and Mary and Martha's home for, for lunch, Martha went to the kitchen to go and fix lunch. Where did Mary go? She went to sit at the foot of Jesus. She was the first one, first one, that got to realize that Jesus had accomplished what He said He was going to do. And so the tomb was empty. Come on, it's okay to say amen in here. And now think about it. She was the first one that got to see that. They did not like, did not appreciate women back in those days. And even today sometimes I think that we do not appreciate them as much as we should. We kind of disgrade them, if you will. She went and told the disciples. And, and from then on, then on, they, there was, according to the scriptures, there was at least 500 in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, it tells us, chapter 15, verse 6. It tells us that, that uh, Paul said that there was at least 500 brethren that got to see Jesus during that 40 days after he walked out of the tomb. Now, they didn't, they said brethren, they didn't count women and children back then. So I'm assuming there was probably a thousand that got to see him. Jesus also said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So when the helper come, when the helper come, we know what a helper is. A helper is always there to help us, encourage us, to pick us up, to carry us through the tough times that we go through. This, and he said, the, and also be the, the spirit of truth. And we know that would be Jesus, okay? So there was many people that seen Jesus. Many of them got to walk with him. Even the same evening after he seen Mary the Magdalene at the garden, and he spoke her name, she realized who he was. The Bible said that he went to the disciples. Thomas was not with them at that time. But he visited them. He even, he even cooked breakfast. Think about that. He cooked breakfast for his disciples one morning during that 40 days that he, that he was there. And we know the Bible said that I'm going to, Jesus said, I'm going to send the helper and the spirit of truth to you. He also know Saul. The Bible tells us that Saul was a very devout Pharisee. Now he knew and he felt like that these Christians was going to ruin what he, who he was. That he was a Pharisee, very devout Pharisee, knew the law. So he started to persecute them. But you see, Paul, or Saul, had a come to, come to Jesus moment on the road to Damascus. And what a turnaround it was. But he thought, and, and the scripture said that Jesus told him, there's going to be some that's going to kick you out of the synagogue. There's going to be some that's going to crucify you, thinking they're doing it for God. And Saul did until he had a complete turnaround and started following, following God. Yes, he told the disciples. He said, he told them, he said, you know, I'm going to die. And in John 14, John 14, 
John 13, 36, Peter says, well, where are you going, Lord? John 14, John 14, 5, Thomas said, Lord, we don't know the way. We don't know the way. We don't know where you are going. You see, I believe that the disciples was not so concerned about Jesus. They was concerned about themselves. Now think about it. They had been with Jesus for three years. He took care of all their problems. He took care of all their needs. He was there and helped them and encouraged them and prayed for them. Can you imagine what they went through? Can you imagine thinking about your leader leaving? Sure, they wanted to know where he was going. But they were more concerned about themselves. Who is going to take care of them? Who is going to encourage them? Who is going to lead them when they was gone? They did not experience the Holy Spirit yet. They had no idea what was in store for them. They had no idea what a difference it would make in their lives. Sometimes church, come on. I'm awful afraid that we are the same way. I'm afraid sometimes we're afraid of the Holy Spirit. You see, in order to be a Christian, you've got to have the Holy Spirit. There's no other way. The Bible says you repent, you ask God for forgiveness, God forgives you, and then you are empowered with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I believe we are afraid of the Holy Spirit. Do you ever think do you ever think that maybe God won't send very much of the Holy Spirit because you're afraid to use it? Every time that we give an excuse why we can't do something, think about it, come on now. Every time we give an excuse, maybe God's going to hold back. He said, why should I send it? Why should I send the Holy Spirit? You're not going to use it. Why is that? I believe also, if you do not use something, you're going to lose it. And I believe it's the same way with the Holy Spirit. Now the Scripture says that if we don't know Jesus, it's a sin. Now think about this. Do you think that our loving God will send someone to hell? In Romans, Romans chapter 1, 18 to 20. Paul in his writing tells us, and if you really dig into that, Paul says, you know, there's no reason, no reason that anybody will not know about God. Look at the creation. Look what God created. But also, also, each and every one of us, People ought to be able to see a difference in us, Paul says. People ought to also ought to be able to tell their story. And he said there's no reason, no reason whatsoever that a person will not know God. And he said, yes, they will be judged for that. But he also says the reason a lot of people, come on church, a lot of people is their heart is hardened. They're busy with other things and they don't realize who God is and what he, God wants to do for them. In Romans 18, 20, Paul writes. Also, we know that Satan is the, kind of the, is the ruler of the world. And we know that he knows that his days are mentioned, are, are numbered. He knows that. And he knows that time is short for him. My question is tonight, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? What if? What if, what if it came tonight? What if you took your last breath, breath tonight? Do you know, without a shadow of doubt, we're day closer, right, Jen? Amen. We all know. Every day, we're day closer. And you see, picture.
picture with me, if you will. Picture with me. Jesus told them what was coming. Jesus told them, and he called it the Helper and also the Spirit of Truth. And he also told them when they come, and it's in the Scripture, there was three things that the Holy Spirit would do. Convict each and every one of us. Convict us. Would let us know the difference between right and wrong. The second thing was, it was going to judge each and every one of us. It would judge us. But it also would give us an opportunity to repent and turn our lives around. I believe sometimes, church, that we haven't felt in Jesus bumps for a long time. Come on. I don't think we have. I don't think we allow God to get to us. I don't think we'll allow God to come within us because we're afraid. Tomorrow, if you ain't got a church home, tomorrow, God laid something else on my, life, on my heart. Tomorrow, the title of the message is Born to Burn. Born to Burn. We're going to look at the Holy Spirit in a different way. We are. But I'm afraid church that we've been Christians for a long time. We've heard that He's coming back to get to church for a long time. And also, too, we're, we don't want to get fanatic like the preacher gets sometimes. Who wants to jump up and down? Who wants to throw up their hands? Who wants to say, praise you, Jesus? Who wants to do that? I do. Because, church, I want you to understand one thing. I'm a firm believer. I'm a firm believer that you can have as much of the Holy Spirit that you want. And if you want just a little bit, that's what God's going to give you. But if you've got a thirst and you want more and more, and once you get that and willing to use that for God, then He's going to pour it on you. He is. Church, there's a lot out there to be done. The harvest is plentiful, the Bible says, but the workers are few. Are you a worker? Are you in love with God? Are you concerned about the lost souls? Are you? What are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? Tomorrow we're going to have another healing service. We got a lady called and she says, I want healed. I'm a, I mean, I want anointed. We're going to do that again tomorrow. Church, there's things out there that are happening. They are. And there's people not afraid to step out. Step out and maybe be a little bit different than what you see. That's what God's using. That's what God wants. He wants workers that are not afraid to speak up. Not afraid to go through the mire. Not afraid of the persecution. Not afraid of sneaky snake. You see, church, I've said it many times and I'm going to keep on saying it. The battle's already fought. The battle's already won. Sneaky Snake is lost. His days are numbered. And we go around like we are the ones that have to fight the battle. We don't have to. All we have to do is show up, put our hand in the hand of God, and allow Him to lead us. And you see, if Jesus hadn't left, there's several things that, wouldn't have, that couldn't happen. If Jesus didn't go back, then number one, if he didn't die on the cross, he wouldn't have conquered death. Okay? If he didn't go back, the uh, Holy Spirit couldn't come. If he didn't go back to sit at the right hand of the Father, then the disciples wouldn't have been empowered and they wouldn't have took the gospel all through the world. That was what their mission was. 
So what are we doing with the Holy Spirit? Huh? Think about it. If He hadn't been back, we wouldn't have salvation. You wouldn't have had that joy and that guarantee of spending eternity with our Lord and Savior. You wouldn't have. He had to go back because if He stayed there, the gospel wouldn't have spread. So what are you doing to help spread the gospel? What am I doing to help spread the gospel? Am I witnessing? Come on. Are we who we say we are? Are we? How much of the Holy Spirit do you want? How much do you want? Do you want to be fed? Come on. How full is your cup tonight? Is the fool runneth over? How much have you got the saucer? You know, years ago, years ago, they used to drink coffee out of the saucer. I can remember my grandpa doing that. Come on. How full is your cup tonight? Is it runneth over? Are you willing? Are you willing to be used by God? Amen. I got to get that. If you're willing to be used, God's going to use you. God's going to use you. But one thing I want you to understand before we leave, before we close. God's not going to dish it out, the Holy Spirit, if you're not going to use it. If you're going to sit on it, if you're going to sit on it, He's not going to pour it on you. He's not going to waste that on you because you're not going to be willing to get up and do something with it. He's going to pour it on the ones that are willing to get off their backside out in the shade and in the heat. Get out there and stir it up. The Holy Spirit is a gift. But it also was one of the promises that God gave us. And I believe, church, I believe we should always be seeking and wanting more. Amen. Think about it. Because of what He did on the cross, Christ did on the cross, we can have a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with God Himself. We can Think about it. We can have a one-on-one -on -one with God. The power, the power that brought Jesus back to life is made available to me and you. When was the last time you sat down and had and fellowship with God? When was the last time you sat down and fellowship with God? When was the last time you sat down and had a fellowship meal with God? Just you and God talk one on one. When was the last time? Did you talk? Did you listen? Or did you tell God what's going to have to happen? Think about it. Did you praise Him? Come on. When was the last time? The disciples had no idea. But I would have loved to have been there. But you know what I believe, church? And I'm going to maybe leave you. I said maybe leave you on this. I think that us, our churches, we need a fire. We need that wind to come in and we need that fire to fall on each and every one of us. The Bible tells us that Elijah needed to talk to God. And so he went and there was an earthquake. There was a wind that came up. How did God show up? In a still, small voice. We don't know how God's going to show up. But think about the early church. You see, the Holy Spirit is what birthed the, whole, the early church. Think about them in that upper room. When the fire came, 
The Holy Ghost came. The promise came. Think about it. They was praying. They had no idea what was coming. But they knew God promised them something. They knew because the, tent, the tomb was empty. They knew that, it, that because of all that, it would come. But they didn't know how. I would have loved to be there. I would have loved to have been there. Probably would have scared my socks off. But also, too, once they was empowered with the Holy Spirit, it made a difference in their life. Church, when we are filled, when we are filled and overflow, and you know, I've said it many times, I want to be so full of the Holy Spirit, I ooze out. The reason is church. Because I believe there's a lot of work God's got for me to do. I can't do it on my own. I can't. I've got to have the Holy Spirit. I've got to have the helper and the spirit of truth. I've got to have the fire, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. I've got to have that in order to be and do what God wants me to do. Am I going to be persecuted? Yes, I am. Jesus was. But I'm going to leave you on this. You see, when you take your last breath, I don't know when that's going to come. Nobody knows. The Bible tells me when we are formed in our mother's womb, come on, God knows when we're going to take our, our first breath, and He also knows when we're going to take our last breath. We have no idea knowing when we're going to do that. But from point A to point B, then we are to be about doing what God wants us to do be out and about doing what God wants us to do. Once we take that last breath and we cross over into eternity, Sneaky Snake is not going to be with you. Come on. Come on. Amen. Come on. Get excited. He's not. Them days are over. Persecution is over. We're going to be in the presence of God and all the saints that went ahead of us. I'm going to be in my mansion. I have no idea. Don't care. It could be a log cabin with the 40 acres and a one bottom plow with my own mule. I don't care. What I do care about is I'm going to be in the presence of God. I'm going to hear well done, good and faithful <laughs> servant. Are you ready? Let's sing.
exactly what you're going to take home with you. Exactly it. But I challenge you, challenge you, when you start coming to worship, come expect it. Because when I walk through the doors, I always wonder, God, what have you got in store for us tonight? What kind of blessings am I going to be able to see? What part of the miracles am I going to be a part of that you got for the church tonight? Church, He's got a lot more for you. He wants to give it to you. He wants you to receive it. So don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of it. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming on a Saturday night to worship. Spread the word around. We're looking for volunteers. Uh, we're hoping that uh, things have kind of settled down. We're hoping that we can kind of expand. We've got some ideas that we want to do. Uh, we want to uh, kind of get the uh, band running on a Saturday night and bring other people in. We've got a new sound system coming with some new things. We're looking for volunteers. But you see, one thing I want you to understand we're not doing this for Emmanuel Church. We're not doing it for the pastor. We're not doing it for the worship team. We're doing it for God. Amen. That's why we do it. We want people to see the awesome God that we've got. Amen. And church, one of these days, He's going to come get the church. The first time He came was to save. The second time he comes, it's going to be the judge. I'm a fruit inspector. The Bible says I can do that. And by judging some of the fruit, or by looking at some of the fruit, some people's not ready. It's up to me. It's up to us to spread the word. The, the 12 disciples who became apostles. A disciple, disciple was a learner. An apostle was a messenger. We are apostles. We are messengers. Are you spreading the word? Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you and praise you and thank you for the awesome God that you are. We thank you for the word, but most of all, Lord, I just say thank you for the fire. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you because without that, without that, when Peter stood up and preached the first time, there wouldn't have been 3,000 saved. Without that, nobody would have had the, the excitement and, and had the turnaround in our lives that the Holy, only the Holy Ghost can do. So Lord, I say thank you very much. Now Lord, fill me. I want fill I want to overflow. I want to be your messenger. Yes. I want to be the one that you want me to be so I can do what you got for me to do. And when my mission is complete, and my mansion in John 14, when my mansion is complete, there's a promise. You're going to come get me. And I'm going to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. You are awesome, Lord, and I love you. In Christ's name. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Have a good evening. Thanks for coming.